everyone. I've been told there is some microblogging and live tweeting going on at this conference today. So for those of you who want to know the hashtag, it's hashtag SPC Media C O N F. Hashtag S P C M E D I A C O N F. Please be kind. Thank you. I love the theme of this conference because I always begin all my long term projects with a discussion of how our current technology debates are really just another step in our long historical movement from face to face togetherness to experiencing togetherness with others across time and space. So my talk is called Time, Space, Technology, and Togetherness. And this, I think, is really the primary outcome of having so many communication technologies swirling around us at all times, really saturating our environment. They've allowed us to know of one another, of our thoughts and feelings about one another, across great time and great distances, uh, from the time of cave drawings and etchings to writing and picture drawing, and later the mass production of all this with printing presses and computers and photography and cell phones. You know, we're now mediating between individuals stretching back from the beginning of recorded history to now. And I find this both comforting and instructive. It's comforting to know that there's that kind of thread connecting us to our ancestors. And, and to me, when we feel a little overwhelmed by the pace and scope of all this technological change, uh, that just kind of grounds it a little bit for me. Everything we're doing is really just another step on a path that was started by the earliest humans, and it's an expression of ourselves that we want to share, just like they did. Facebook has tapped into this most elegantly, right? I mean, they've most astutely tapped into the desire to share aspects of ourselves with one another on a convenient, easy to navigate platform, uh, very efficiently, constantly. But you know, really, is that so different from uh, sending a, a letter to one another years ago, or writing a book in first person, or an essay, or blogging now? or allowing cameras into your home to document everything you're doing around the clock and be shaped into a reality TV show. I mean, these are different aspects of the same thing, I think. The media are making it easier to live and to share in public. And, you know, there's dangers and risks associated with this, which sometimes I think we're still barely aware of. Uh, but the impulse to do it is hardly new very, very old. And in fact, that's why doing all this has taken such hold of us. Um, it's, so, it's so prominent in the public imagination. Technologies and platforms and applications allowing us to share things with one another really easily, really widely, really efficiently. It's because it taps into an impulse that is not only ancient, but I think primal. You know, we like to look. We like to be seen. And there's nothing new or startling about this. It may be troubling, you know, privacy is threatened. You know, privacy actually is becoming unrecognizable. Um, but the desire to be seen, to be acknowledged, to be liked, to be part of a community in which these acts are taking place, this is older than dirt. And it's driving so much of what we see in society today. Now, there are innumerable aspects of all this that can be researched and explored. My particular interest is in looking at how when you increase the amount of time and space that people are separated, um, feelings of connected in, connectedness and community are going to change. But at one time, and this made sociologists very, very nervous, the implication was that people would be separated from one another in important ways, and that we would really be losing essential aspects of ourselves, essential aspects of our community. And as research has, un has uncovered many aspects of, of, this, uh, of this change over time, we've seen that that's really not what's happening, that people are finding new ways to be together, new ways to connect, new ways to be in community with one another. It's just that we do it portably now, and that's why the title of my book is called Portable Communities. It's the portability of social connectedness. One person said to me, you know, I've got this community that I keep with me at all times. I feel like I can put them in my pocket and take them with me wherever I go. And that's where I got the title for my book, Portable Communities. Just to tell you a little bit about this research that I did, and then I'll, I'll talk about what I found out. 
I elected to do for my book, Portable Communities, what's called qualitative interviewing. They were face-to-face, -face, actually, for my first book, and emailed for my second book. Long-term, wide-ranging, in-depth interviews with people, because I wanted, to, I wanted to get the experience of what it's like to be immersed in technology like we are. I mean, we kind of know what it's like, but I wanted people to tell me you know, exactly what are their feelings, what are their fears, how are they making and keeping and sustaining and sometimes even breaking their social connections with one another. And it's, it's a researchable question. You know, it's something that you need to, we need to be finding out more about. But so much of the research that had been done before I got into this was, was quantitative. Surveys, you know, large-scale data gathering. And I wanted to get at the feelings underneath all that data. So that's what I did. Um, I could tell you later more about the methodology if you want to know. I don't think usually students really need to know, you know or want to know every little thing about it. But I will tell you that I, for this book, emailed and had email interviews with 87 individuals. They were from a wide range of ages, and racial and gender and occupational backgrounds, although the sample does skew more towards being female, white, and under 30. And Always when I do my research, I combine what I'm doing with an in-depth literature review from many, many fields that covers both quantitative and qualitative studies. So I'm kind of putting it all together, and what I'll be talking about today is just my little piece of the puzzle. So in essence, I'm asking people about their experience of making the kind of connections that we do all the time. And I ask them questions like, why do you go online to the extent that you do? Where do you go when you go online? What are your fears? What are your concerns? How do your online and offline worlds and relationships affect one another? How is your life different from, and this is for older people, from your lives before you used all these technologies? I understand if you're younger, um, you, you guys can probably still remember a world without cell phones and, and internet and technology, but pretty soon nobody will be able to remember that world. Um, so what does that mean for us? And how does all this fit together and drive the kind of society that we see? Well, that's what I'm studying. And the results, the longer version of it is in my book called Portable Communities. Um, today I just want to talk about you know a few of the pieces, and especially the dynamics and the impact of portability, okay, of being able to take your community, your connections with you wherever you go. And one of the first things that I discovered in the course of doing my research in asking people about the portability is that, and this won't be a surprise to you, a lot of people spend a lot of unstructured time on computers and cell phones, making connections that may seem casual, they may seem very deceptively unimportant, but they actually come to mean quite a lot to them. You know, it starts out by procrastinating, by putting off something you don't want to do. So, or maybe you want to feel a little less bored, a little less lonely. So you go online, and usually you head to a specific destination. It might be Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, it might be a website, a discussion board, a blog. Yet you head to a destination, but maybe without something you know, that you have to do there. You just want to hang out. And um, you've got no agenda in mind other than just, you know, filling up time. One of the people I interviewed said to me, if I am bored, I am probably online. So hanging, on hanging out online, it may seem kind of pedestrian, kind of like no big deal. But it turns out that it's really rich sociologically. I devote a whole chapter in the book to the dynamics of just hanging out and playing around and having fun online. Because you see, some sociologists have discovered that when you're hanging out online, you're creating what um, a sociologist named Ray uh, Oldenburg called a third space for your life. A third space in addition to work and home. A third area to go to um, where you can come and go in a relaxed, casual atmosphere. Um, but more than you think, it really provides something important to your life. It really enlivens it. It really enriches it. And of course, the physical counterpart to this is a, a coffee shop, a pub, a student center, a beauty shop, you know, a place where you can just go and hang out, where you can socialize, where you have minimal obligations, minimal entanglements, 
but because these can be approximated online now, because they're portable, someone is always there. They're always open. And because they're relaxed, and because you don't have to contribute much, but you're just your presence, it's very enticing. And these places can become a source of surprisingly rich connections for us. As one person told me, I find that the internet is a place where I can unwind, where I don't have to think about work, where I don't have to think about my problems at home. I have freedom. I can go to a site of interest to me that has no connection with work or obligations whatsoever. I find myself chatting a lot with old friends, making new friends, maybe doing some shopping. And I'm so busy during the day that when I get home, all I want to do is relax by being online. And since we can do this now so easily, I mean, even with a cell phone that's in our pocket, we can almost turn any physical place into a mental hangout. We can leave the physical place with its obligations, and we can just kind of zone out and hang out and yet make connections with a lot of other people. And so you can see why this has become such a popular thing to do, right? Because our modern lives are increasingly very busy. And when you hang out, you don't have to do much, like I said, but contribute your presence. So it's comfortable, it's inviting, it's constantly populated by friends, um, very little is required of you. And so you know these portable little websites become excellent hangouts. It turns out these hangouts are good for us, and they're even good for the health of a society because it makes you feel like you belong to something larger than yourself. It makes you feel like a sense of community around you that becomes very powerful. You feel plugged in, plugged into society, plugged in to one another. And again, this is one of those old primal instincts, right? As, as old as, you know, dirt, to want to be plugged in to the world around you. There's a social anthropologist named Kate Fox, and she says hanging out online can even kind of reestablish the tribal kinds of feelings that used to be so prominent during pre-industrial days. She says you know, it's very alienating to be as busy as we are and to be as physically separated from our loved ones, our family, our friends, our boyfriends and girlfriends. You know, we're busy, we can't be with them so much. But in the old days, I mean the really old days, we used to be together with people all the time. Tribes would hang out together you know, for hours and hours and hours. And so Kate Fox says cell phones kind of return us to that pre-tribal time, reducing alienation by restoring a pre-modern kind of community in which people were in frequent, almost constant contact with one another. She thinks there's nothing wrong with that, but that's great. It's pre-tribal. And it returns us, she says, to a more natural, more humane pattern of society. So it's just interesting to think of this technology returning us to something that's more of nature, more of humanity. Because as I said, there's a lot of people who are still worrying that it's separating us from one another in an inhumane way. Um, but there's some theory out there and some research to back it up that it's making people feel more connected, not in a superficial way, but in a really critical, really important way for our well-being. So, you know, something more to hanging out than you would think.